What's up guys, Tim Little here with Tactical Bassin. Recently, we shot a video at Matt's house uh, showing you his 2017 rod arsenal. You know, believe it or not, a lot of people want to know what are the rods that we have, what's the gear we're using, and in our videos, we talk about a lot of different combos. We talk about some rods, some reels, and I think, you know, like Matt touched on, people just want to see the whole picture. They want to see everything you have, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you my 2017 rod arsenal. Now, one thing you have to realize is it's taken me a long time to work up to what I have. You know, some of you guys have been following us for a long time know that I started out of, you know, fishing from the shore with an ugly stick and made my way up. So uh, let's jump right into it. We'll start off with spinning because I have the, uh, the fewest of them and we'll go from there. So right off the bat, I'm going to go with uh, my lightest rod that I have. This actually is a rod I've had for several years. Um, back when I was tournament fishing, you know, places like Shasta and Orville and stuff, this was a must-have rod for me. This is the GLX, the G Loomis GLX drop shot rod. The model number is DSR820. Now this rod is super light. I throw four pound test on it, sometimes a little lighter, sometimes a little heavier. Uh, I throw like 16th ounce hair jigs on it. You're really, really finesse stuff. This is actually a, a, a drop shot rod, so you can drop shot on it as well. I've caught some giant spots on it drop shotting, but uh, it's super sensitive, and I use it for my, my super, super finesse light baits. I actually have two of those, and uh, don't know where the other one is, so i got to find it. I, think it. I think Matt probably took it. But uh, the next rod... Um, in my lineup is going to be the GLX Cinco rod. You know, I've fished a lot of rods on the market. You know, I have a lot of different brands. And uh, hands down for me, this is my favorite Cinco rod. This is the BSR 852. This is the 6 to 12 pound test rod. It's uh, super sensitive, super light, and uh, pretty hard to beat. I do want to backtrack a little bit. Getting back to that drop shot rod, I pair that up with a Shimano Sustain. This is the 1000 size. You know, a lot of reels on the market, <clears throat> you know, the 1500, the 2000, 2500 size, I wanted a, a nice compact reel that had a good drag on it and that I could still uh, back reel with. So that's why I went with that Shimano Sustain in the 1000 size, real small profile, super light. <clears throat> So getting back to getting back to the the Senko rod, um, you can see I have a jerkbait tied on here. I actually uh, was messing around with this the other day when Matt and I were were shooting that jerkbait video. So I tied on uh, this Lucky Craft and Table Rock uh, shad. But my spinning reels. This is the Daiwa Fuego. This is actually the 1500 size. Now this is their older model. This this one retailed. Uh, like I said, a lot of this stuff I've had for for several years. I think this one retailed for three forty nine back in the day, but I've had it for I don't know five or six years now, and it's still tried and true. And it's it's a great great reel. Um, Daiwa makes some great spinning reels. Um, all right. So now jumping up into length. Um, You've heard Matt and I talk about it. You know, we disagree a little bit. He likes the 783. I actually like um, the 792. I have three of them. Unfortunately, this is a, a rod that Dobbins discontinued. It's a seven foot nine two power, and um, I throw everything from little Kitex on it to tubes to darter heads. Um, again, I pair all these up with the Daiwa Fuego, the 1500 size. Uh, most of them I run braid deleter, some I have straight fluoro. I'll just have the, the spare spools. You know, I'll have one with braid on it, one with straight fluoro. But uh, the 792, you know, Matt touched on it a little bit in his arsenal video. The longer rods for me, when I'm using really light line, they just seem to play the fish better. Um, when you hook a giant, you could just let that rod do the work and you don't have as much arm pump. You don't, you know, you don't, it's not all on the wrist. You know, you let that rod do the work. But this 7.9, the reason that I like it so much 
you know, out here in California, we're fishing these deep, clear water reservoirs. And a lot of times we're fishing anywhere from 25 feet to 90 feet, you know, and when you're fishing that deep, a lot of times, no matter what rod you have, you're not going to feel the bite. The fish either pick it up on the fall or they pick it up, they mouth it and pick it up, and you never, you never actually feel a tick or anything like that. But with this 7.9 in that really light tip, I literally can, I literally watch that tip and I can, from years of fishing it, I know when it, it, it's more than just the weight of the bait and I can set. Um, another thing that, uh, another tip I can give you, when I'm running all of these, these rods, you know, these three 792s, uh, no matter if I'm throwing a, a tube or a darter head or anything like that, I try and keep the weight the same, either six, three sixteenths ounce or a quarter ounce. And uh, I do that so I, I know the feel. You want to learn your gear, learn your tackle, spend time and le learn how that bait feels in the water and, and how it moves and how that tip, that tip loads because uh, when you're switching back and forth between baits, it, it feels different. And so, you know, coming from the tournament, the tournament scene, you know, I had multiple rods, the same thing, and I wanted it all to match and feel the same. So um, for me personally, I like to keep my baits kind of weighing the same um, so I know how they feel in the water. So like I said, I have, I have three of those 792s. The, one of the other rods that I have in the lineup is, uh, is the Dobbins Champion Extreme, the 743. Uh, those last, the last Dobbins I talked about were also the Champion Extremes. Um, this is a seven foot four three power, so a little bit shorter um, and one power up. This I actually throw heavier Kitex on, heavier ball heads. I'll throw um, nail weighted Senkos. I typically use that GLX Senko rod for weightless Senkos, um, but the 743 is a great all around shaky head rod, darter head rod for heavier weights finesse jigs, those sort of things. That three power, uh, just like in a bait caster, lets you throw a little bit heavier baits. So I have one of those in the lineup. Again, paired with uh, the Daiwa Fuego, the 1500 size. All right, so moving into bait casters, you know, you can see I got, I don't know, 45 combos here or something. So I'll try and go through these, these fairly quickly. But uh, let's start with this, with this rack over here, just because I'm, I'm on it. This is the new GLX. This is the 895C. This thing is a bad rod. It's, it's, a, it's a heavy rod. It's not weight wise, but action wise. Um, super sensitive. So I throw my heavy jigs on this, my heavy Carolina rigs, those sort of things. I paired this up with the Cronarc 150 um, HG high speed, put 30 pound braid on it to a liter. But this, this thing casts like a dream super sensitive and has enough back, backbone to really handle those big fish. Again, man, I can't say enough good things about these new GLX rods. They are, they are bad. So my next, next rod in the arsenal. Ooh. And for those of you guys that actually get a lot of comments about my rod racks, um, this one I actually picked up from a, a tackle shop that was going out of business and they had these handmade they had a couple of them, so I grabbed one. It works great. So unfortunately, it's custom. You can't can't uh, buy it. This one actually is a Berkeley, uh, a Berkeley rack. And believe it or not, I got the base and the and the whole thing from a thrift shop. And what I did, I took it to a um, a metal guy over here and had him extend the arms. And then I bought these Berkeley combo, the Berkeley combo rod racks you can get on Amazon or Tackle Warehouse. Um, I think if they have them on Tackle Warehouse, we'll put a link down the video for the description for them. Uh, it actually holds five combos, so I had to make some arms that were long enough to hold hold these, and I can fit I don't know 30 combos on this rack. So it's uh, I get a lot of comments about it in the videos, people asking you know where I got them, but that's what that is. That's uh, a Berkeley rack. So getting back to the rods themselves, this is another GLX. This is the 894, so it's the step down from the 895. Um, this is. Uh, Again, it's a GLX, G Loomis GLX. It's a seven foot five, uh, medium heavy action. Um, I paired this up with a Shimano Corrado 70. This is a bad reel. It's, it's a, a 70 size, so it fits really nice in the palm. And this is actually an 8.2 to one. So um, for those of you who've been watching my stuff for a long time, you know that I like, that I like Revo, 
uh, bait casters. Um, but there's a lot of, lot of nice stuff coming to the market, and uh, I've been really, really impressed with these new Shimano reels. Um, but you'll see from all my gear, I, it's, it's a hodgepodge. I have a whole bunch of different, different brands, you know, Daiwa, G Loomis, Shimano, Revo, um, all sorts of things. But uh, again, this, this Shimano 70, you'll see I have, I have four or five of them. They are phenomenal reels. Um, great, great combo. Now, I don't have a lot of the custom stuff like Matt does. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm afraid to get into that. I don't know if it's another thing that I <laughs> can't afford. Um, but those, those are some sweet rods. But one of the combos that we have that are like, this is actually the 853. This is the G Loomis GLX 853. And this is, this is probably... Probably my fa it's probably my new favorite combo in my whole lineup. I paired it with the Shimano. Oh, this is the Outer Baron. Um, it's <laughs> it's a legit, it's a legit combo. This this whole thing is so light. Um, but I actually, when I first got this rod and started fishing it, I had to get used to the sensitivity because it's so sensitive. When you pair that up with with braid to a leader, it's it's hard not to set on every little thing you feel. But I use this for my um, if I want to go like a bait cast setup for for finesse stuff, either a drop shot. Um, right now I have a, a quarter ounce Carolina rig on, um, but any of my smaller, my lighter stuff that I want to finesse fish, this is my go-to bait casting setup. Again, that's the G Loomis GLX 853C JWR paired up with a Shimano Outer Baron. Continuing down the line, um, these actually. I'm very impressed with these these uh, these rods. These are the Shimano Zodius rods. They just came out um, fairly recently. This is the this is the 175 heavy. Uh, it's a heavy action rod. I paired it up. Oops, paired it up with uh, Abu Garcia Revo STX Gen 3. Um, it's got 22 pounds of drag. So I actually throw um, my heavier A rigs on this. And I've been been really impressed with it. It's a uh, it's a rod that doesn't the price point doesn't break the bank and uh, super sensitive and uh, great all around rod. The, the next rod in the lineup is going to be the same. It's going to be the the Zodius again. This is actually a a, the, a power down. This is the 172 medium heavy, and I paired this up with a Corrado 200. <clears throat> Put a 30 pound or 20 pound braid on with a mono leader, and this is what I've been throwing my light A rigs on. You know, my A rigs with three eighth ounce heads or three three sixteenths ounce heads, those sort of things for fishing around docks. It's a little shorter rod, I believe it's a uh, like seven seven two, um, so just a little over seven feet. But it's great for throwing that finesse rig around around docks and those sort of things. I haven't really. Um, finesse fish like throw a jig on or anything like that but I'm sure you could uh, again this is a great great rod so let's go over to the next rack so that kind of wraps up that one let's start well let's let's start uh, with the big stuff um, this is uh, this is my my ultra heavy this is a 908 it's a nine foot rod eight power it's Dobbins. I paired that up with the, um, this is the Abu Garcia Revo Toro NACI. This is the, I want to, I think it's, it's the bigger one. I think it's the 400 size. I have, I have 100 pound braid on this to 30 pound mono. And this is what I throw um, my big soft baits on or my big like hinkles, my big glide baits, those sort of things. The hinkle trout I throw on this. It's a great setup. Uh, the reel, I think this is discontinued, but uh, great reel. It's um, you can fish it in salt water. Those, it's all it's all sealed. It's a great combo. It has enough power to to drag those fish to the boat. But this is I only have one of these. This is a 908, and this is this is the, <laughs> a big dog. The next rod that I have, we'll just go right down these swim bait rods. This is the Dobbins 867. So this is an eight foot six seven power rod and I actually 
As far as throwing swim baits, I actually prefer the 807 better. What I found, this, this is 8'6", 7 power. The 807 is 8 foot, 7 power, so it's got 6 inches, le or six inches more on this one. Uh, it's got a little, little softer tip. So when I f hit the HUD fish or the Magnum fish, um, I, I like the 807 better, honestly. The 867, where, where this one shines, is again throwing big glide baits. It's got a little softer tip for me. And uh, when, you know, when you're throwing those treble hook baits, which is why I have a treble hook on this one, um, it's got that softer tip and, and it plays those fish better so you don't have the, the tendency to pull those treble hooks out of the fish. But this is a great, great uh, soft swim bait rod if you're throwing treble hooks and uh, glide bait rod, big glide bait rod. So I, I mentioned the 807s. I have one, two, three, three of them. Um, these are my HUD rods. In, in previous videos, you know, we've talked about jig hooks versus treble hooks um, and the types of rod and rod actions you want for those sort of baits. Typically a jig hook, you want a stouter rod. When you hammer those fish, you want to drive that thing in and just grind them to the boat. Treble hook bait for me, I want a softer tip and I want to play them a little more. Um, but this is an 807, this is a Dobbins 807, and uh, this is an old, this is a Revo Toro. Um, this is actually a 5.6 to 1. So this is, <clears throat> this is my creeping, creeping bottom reel. Uh, you throw it out there and just kind of just creep that HUD on the bottom. Um, again, 80-pound uh, braid on this, 30-pound uh, mono leader. But uh, like I said, I have, I have three of these. Uh, I do have one with a Shimano Cardiff. This is a great, great uh, reel for the price point. I think they're, I think they're like 100 and, 120 bucks or something. Uh, this is the Cardiff 300A, but again, it's a, it's a great, it doesn't break the bank, and it's a great reel for throwing the bigger baits. Um, so I mentioned, I mentioned rod action and pairing them up with a jig hook style bait or a treble hook style bait. And I hope that makes sense. You know, um, the best way I can put it is think about a cranking rod. You know, some guys like, uh, like glass rods that are super flimsy. And uh, the reason for that is when you stick a fish on a treble hook bait, you have three hooks. And three hooks means they're working against each other. You know, this hook on this point, the hook point on this is pulling against the hook point on that. So. To make sense of it all, it's uh, when you have a jig hook, it's one hook, and you, you're 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 taking all the power right on that hook. When you have the three hooks, you want something a little bit softer that gives that gives and and plays those fish better. So that gets us into the next set of rods that I have, the Dobbins 806. So it's again, it's an eight foot rod, but it's a six power, so it's a, a power lighter, and this is what I use for my soft swim baits, smaller soft swim baits with treble hooks. So my um, line through Ospreys, my uh, Ragos, um, what else, soft swim baits. Uh, if I rig the eight inch trash fish on it uh, with, the, with the treble hook, I'll throw it on this. But primarily my 806s are my glide bait rods. I throw the Waver 200 on it. I throw the Gancraft 230 on it. Um, Again, it's just a power lighter, and it works great for those treble hook baits. I do have another one rigged up right here. This one's uh, another Shimano Cardiff 300, and this one's 20-pound fluoro. I go, if I feel like I'm fishing a lake where the fish are line shy and there's very good water clarity, this is the one instance where I will get away from the braid to a leader, um, and I will fish straight fluoro. Um, but, uh, yeah, so got three of those. So how I have, I have this pretty much set up by, by height. So um, we'll, we'll go right down the line. All right, so the next set of rods is going to be uh, my deep cranking rods. Um, I have three Dobbins 805 CBs. Um, again, it might seem like overkill having this many multiple rods. But again, I come from the tournament background. So you want to have you know, more than one setup. You know, you don't have time to retie and all that stuff in the tournament. So um, 
again, if you want to change crankbaits or colors or those sort of things, it's a lot easier just to pick up another rod and throw it out. Um, but Dobbins 805 CB, this is a workhorse. I've caught a lot of big fish on this thing. Um, I actually, this is one of my first setups. This is actually the old Abu Garcia Revo winch, five to one. It just gets that bait out there and you just grind it. Um, you've heard Matt and I talk about recently the uh, the Revo, this is the actual the Aura winch. So this is actually uh, not their not their highest price point. This is uh, a step down. I think you can get these for like 120 or 100 bucks. They're they're uh, pretty inexpensive. And to be honest, I actually prefer this over the the newer winches. You know, the Gen 3s. That's actually the old Gen 1, and it feels just like the the Aura. So you could save yourself some money. I actually have have two of those rigged up. Um, great great reels. Now the one, the one glass rod that I have in the lineup is the Shimano Zodius. And I actually have this paired up with the Shimano Antares. Um, this reel is phenomenal. It, uh, for throwing like 10 XDs and those sort of bait, those, those, those kinds of baits, at the end of the day, man, your wrist hurts, your, your elbow hurts, your shoulder hurts. But this reel actually, I don't know how or why, but it takes a lot of the work out of it. Paired up with this glass rod, this is a, it's, it's super easy to throw this bait all day. You know, this is a pretty expensive reel. Um, I, I want to say it's like $5.99, but you can cast a crankbait a mile, and it takes, takes the work out of it. It's super easy to turn the handle. Um, again, it's... I paired it up with the Shimano Zodius' glass rod. This is the, the 176 MHG, so it's their heavy glass rod. And uh, you know, if you can if you can throw a crankbait farther, you know, it's it's all it's all angles. So if you can get that bait out there farther, it means you can get it deeper and reach those fish that that uh, quite possibly haven't been reached uh, from other anglers. All right. Got the 805s dialed in. All right, let's talk about um, these guys. I actually have two of these. This is the Dobbins. This is this is a bad rod. This is the Dobbins Extreme. This is the uh, DX795 flip. So it's a seven foot nine, uh, five power, and uh, I use this for throwing my heavy swim jigs. This is a three quarter ounce dirty uh, dirty jigs, um, California swim jig, and I actually you can see I have this on straight braid. This is what I fish. Uh, right through the toolies. It's super sensitive rod, so I can I can cast it right through the stuff and fill those bites. It's also a great flip and stick. Uh, I paired this up with a with an older Corrado 200 E7, uh, 7 to 1 gear ratio reel. It's just uh, if you are flipping it picks up that slack. But again, this is a great combo for flipping. I do have one other one that uh, that uh, I use. This one actually I have it still rigged up from a big, I was uh, Carolina rigging some big worms. I shot that video a, a couple, I don't know, months ago. This is a 14-inch <laughs> worm. I have, again, a 795 flip, and I have it paired up with an older uh, Revo STX. 7 to 1 gear ratio reel and uh, braid to, um, to leader for the, for the Carolina rig. But these 795s, they're super universal. For uh, for heavy baits, you know, flipping, dragging big worms, uh, big creature baits, and uh, big swim jigs. Now you can see that I mean I have I have a lot of combos, and like I said, it comes comes from the tournament stuff. But uh, you know these you don't need you don't need this you don't need this many rods. It's nice to have, but you don't need this many. Um, one problem that I always run into is I never have the, the exact amount of rods and reels. So I'm always switching reels and rods uh, because no matter what, it seems like you're never equally matched. The next rod in the lineup is going to be the Dobbins um, Champion Extreme 784. And I have three of them. This is, before I got that, Shimano, uh, that GLX rod, these were my favorite rods. They're super universal. It's a great, great rod. Um, you can throw jigs on it. You can throw A-rigs on it. You can throw flutter spoons on it. You can throw Kitex on it. It's just a, a great universal rod. It's a little bit longer. 
Again, I like the longer rods, but uh, the 784 is a uh, great all-around rod. Super sensitive, a little bit longer, so you can make longer casts, plays the fish really well. Uh, this particular combo, I have it paired up with uh, Abu Garcia. This is the Revo MGX, so uh, one of their higher, higher end reels in their lineup. Super light, I think it's 22 pounds of drag. Um, so if you're fishing, you know, Florida or the California Delta, clear like those sort of things, you can lock that drag down and, and hammer those fish home. But uh, great, great combo. Like I said, I have three of them. The other two are paired up. Um, this one's paired up with an old Revo uh, STX. I think it's Gen 2. Um, this one's straight fluoro. And then the third one is paired up with... Uh, Revo STX, I think this is the Gen 3, and uh, this one actually has a, sp a spoon on it. So like I said, this is a super universal rod, that's why I have three of them, because you can do pretty much everything on it. So uh, coming down to the home stretch, the next rod is a rod, I only have one of them. This is the Dobbins Champion Series, it's the 766 Flip. This is my uh, heavy flipping rod, my punching rod. You can see I have it rigged right here with an ounce and a half tungsten, uh, Reaction Innovations Beaver, straight braid, 65 pound braid. This is my punch setup. I have it rigged with a uh, Corrado 200 E7. Um, this, is, this is the heavy flipping stick. This is what I flip or punch the heavy vegetation with. Uh, it's, it's a great rod for that. Other than that, I don't use it for much. So this is one of those rods that's just kind of a specialty rod for me for one technique. Um, and that's how it stays year round. All right, so continuing down the line, um, I got this rod to try out. This is the Daiwa Tatula XC. This is the seven foot four. This is their heavy rod. You could use it for flipping, but I actually got it for uh, for throwing frogs on. It's a it's a light rod, super comfortable. I like the handle on it. Um, I haven't tried a lot of the Daiwa rods, but uh, I got this one and I actually really like it for throwing for throwing heavy. Uh, flip baits on it, swim jigs, and frogging, primarily frogging. That gets us into the next two rods, my 736s, Dobbin 736s. These are my frogging rods. Seven foot three, six power, super stout. I paired both of them. I have two of them set up the same, again, with the uh, Revo Aura, the inshore, seven one to one, 20, 22 pounds of drag straight braid, power fishing. Um, you can cast these frogs a mile with this reel. Again, it's a lower price reel, um, so it, it doesn't break the bank. And it's, uh, this is my third year of these reels, and uh, they're still working great. The last set of rods is going to be my, my shorter rods, my uh, lipless cranks, my square bills. Um, oh, I got one 734 in here. This is that other rod I was talking about that's just the most universal rod, uh, the 764 and the 734. So seven foot three, four power. It's just a little bit, a little bit shorter. You can throw worms on it, small swim baits, jigs, spinner baits, chatter baits, uh, lighter top waters. I have this paired up with a an older uh, Revo SX. Um, great, great. Uh, Great all-around combo, great entry-level combo. It's uh, the reel I think retails for like 120 bucks, and the rod um, about 200. It's uh, a great uh, universal rod. Getting back into the the specialty rods, this is the Dobbin 704 CV. So it's a it's a uh, seven foot four crankbait rod, moderate fast action. I use this for little square bills and uh, rip baits. I paired this up with, again, another one of those Corrado 70s. You know, smaller, lighter, fits really good in the hand, 8.2 gear ratio, and this is a great ripping combo. It's not too long, so when you're standing on the front of the boat, you're not hitting the water with the rod tip. Um, I have two of these, both paired up the same, both of the Corrados. Um, and then the last two rods are going to be G Loomis. This is the uh, their crankbait series. This is the CBR 845. 
Again, this is a seven foot rod. It's just got a little bit softer tip than the Dobbins. And I use this, um, I throw some square balls on it, but I primarily use this as my lipless crankbait rods. My LV500s, um, the uh, River Sea Ruckuses, they, this, for some reason, this blank, it's, uh, when you hook those fish and play them, you know, again, you're the, those treble hook baits, so you don't want to uh, power, you know, you don't want to have too much tip. You want to have a real soft tip, moderate fast action, and this, this, this is what I've finally settled on for my lipless crankbait rods. I've tried a lot of rods. I've tried different brands, different actions, and this is what I've settled with, and I love it. This is the, uh, again, like I said, I paired it up with the Corrado 70 high speed. Uh, I have two of those and work great for the lipless cranks. All right, guys, there you have it, my 2017 rod arsenal. Now realize that I didn't acquire all this overnight. This is years and years of tournament fishing, fun fishing, doing these videos. Um, you know, I started walking the bank and fishing ugly sticks. So I always tell people, buy the best gear that you can afford. You know, don't go into debt over this stuff. It's fishing, but don't go into debt. Buy the buy the nicest gear that you can afford and you work your way up from there. You know, like I said, I've I've worked my way up and this is this is my this is what I've acquired through the years. And this is what we're using. You know, when Matt and I we're, we're recommending this stuff when we're shooting these videos, this is the stuff that we have tried and has worked for us. You know, it's not all one brand or anything like that. It's it's kind of a mixed match and it's what works for us. And realize that every fisherman's different. You know, what works for me might be a little bit different than what works for Matt and vice versa. But this will get you started. You know, this is this is stuff that we've used throughout the years and we have a lot of confidence in and uh, that's why we recommend it. So again, guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for following us on all the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you guys like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. You know, Matt and I were doing three videos a week. So uh, if you guys have any comments or any questions, message us or down below in the comment section. You know, Matt and I, we try and answer all those. You know, give us a little time because we are busy, but uh, we do our best to, uh, to answer all those questions. So again, guys, thanks for the support. I hope you liked the video, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good night.